Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Hallelujah. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Turn to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. We have more of those sheets if you still need any more to hand out. About the facts. It's a reality check. It's called the facts and all the information about how deceptive. How people being lied to. The word says truth sets us free. Amen. But if you don't practice the truth, you're not going to get free. You can know it and not be free. In Genesis 3 and verse 1, let's speak it together. First seven verses. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, first mistake was she was talking with him. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you what? Touch it, lest you what? Die. This is what we call the touch factor. The what? Touch factor. Amen. Amen. This is the orig origin of the touch factor. He says, even she knew it. She explained it even more to the serpent. He says, well, if you eat it, you're gonna, you, you won't die. She goes, no. <laughs> if we touch it, we'll die. Amen? Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So she called, he called God a liar. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Where their eyes will be open, but they will be shut to the spirit realm. And open to the temporary realm. So the woman saw that the tree was good for what? Food. So it, there was a desire of taste. <laughs> the taste of touch. That it was pleasant to the eyes. The desire of eyes. To, and the tree was... Desirable to make what? Someone wise, which was actually more prideful. So she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Again, this is the origin of the touch factor. It was the taste, the touch, the desire of the touch, and the justification of the touch. In other words, that was pride of life. These are categories in 1 John chapter 2. There is a spiritual realm and a physical realm. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. The touch factor. These are the categories of the touch factor that separates us from the touch of God. I'm going to say this again. These are categories of the touch factor that separates us from the touch of God. In verse 15, let's speak it together. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now the world here is talking about the world system. Amen. The operation. The word earth means location. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the 
flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which was the same thing that what Eve saw, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hmm. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of, the fa of God abides for what? Forever. Again, these are categories that a touch factor that separates us from the touch of God. It says lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. What we call works of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of self. These are categories that you and I must be careful of. That's why God has given us a formula to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen? Because when we begin to touch these things, and this is the purpose, if you, you remember, the serpent was one that was enticing Eve to what? Touch. See, she touched in her mind also. We can contaminate ourselves in the things that we see and touch, hear and touch, think and touch, agree and touch. It's a touch factor where the enemy knows exactly how to manipulate us in every area. Remember, he plays with our emotion. That's why we can no longer make decisions by how we feel. We make decisions by truth. In fact, Satan's doctrine is do what you feel like. Amen? And again, why do people want to get high? I love to get high in God's presence. It is the great, that's why he's called the what? Most high. Amen? Because we came from God's presence. And we want to feel good. You'd have to be an idiot if you didn't want to feel good. Amen? Everybody wants to feel good. But see, the devil puts all kinds of stuff in front of us to separate us so that if, we, if he can get us to touch those things, it's a temporary fulfillment, but it doesn't last. And the results afterward are miserable. Hangovers, debt, loss of family, loss of job. Oh, that's real fun. We're having fun now. Jail. Yes, home. You get chauffeured right there and get new jewelry. Hallelujah. 24-hour security, you ain't got nothing to worry about, man. Free health care. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wouldn't let them touch me. Anyways, <clears throat> again, this is the area where we've got to be more tentative, more discerning, more alert about this. You know, even the Lord said to Adam and Eve, when, when he was walking in the garden, remember, now their eyes were blinded to the Lord. They used to see, talk to God face to face. They couldn't anymore because they partook. And I'm not going to get into all of the partaking. You, you can get that, some of the teachings. But there was a more than touch. And, and in this, because they disobeyed God and touched and then partook of it, they became blinded. The first thing they recognized was themselves. Ah! They sowed fig leaves on them. Why? Because the glory of God. You got to remember, they were eternal beings. They didn't have no flesh. They were eternal. Their bodies were glorified. They didn't need blood. Their life was in the spirit. After they blew it, now their life was in the flesh, in the blood. And so after that, so they, decided, so they heard God walking towards them. And they freaked. It's amazing when you start doing the things that are wrong, people run from God instead of to Him. And so they hid themselves. And the Lord said, where are you at, Adam? Like he didn't know, right? And he poked up behind some rock or something. And said, here I am, Lord. So what are you doing, man? He said, well, I heard you walking in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. But he sewed fig leaves on him. And the Lord said to him, who told you that? Who told you that you were what? Naked. In other words, where did this other voice come from? Why have, why aren't you, why have you rejected my voice and picked up another one? There was an exchange made for God's voice 
and the voice of self know. Does everybody understand? Why? Because of a touch. So you must understand that even though you're born again, filled with the Spirit, <laughs> everybody's still vulnerable. It doesn't matter. The more you stay in God's presence, the better it is. The more you participate, now you can come to service, you can go to 60 services a week and not participate and get in and cross over or sow and you'll stay the same. Amen? We have to sow our way out of everything. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Touch factor. Now, you got to understand something that when we were doing the things that were displeasing to God, and we didn't do them because we were bad. We were doing them because we were deceived. Amen? In fact, you got to a point where you didn't want to do it anymore. But you couldn't stop. And same thing with people that gamble and pornography, all of those things. Drugs, alcohol, fornication, whatever it is. Living in sin. We became slaves to sin until the Lord broke that yoke. And then there's a process in regeneration that you and I must follow all the way. Amen? In 2 Corinthians 6 in verse 17. Would you read it with me? Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not what? Touch what is unclean. And I will what? Receive you. So if you touch what is unclean, is he going to receive you? No, he'll reject you. And then I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Again, don't touch unclean things the father if you don't touch him he'll receive you if you do touch him he rejects you it doesn't mean that until until you repent which cleanses that and don't touch it again then he receives you amen but what's he talking about i mean he loves every single one of us even when we were morons but it's his presence that is no longer with us when we touch unclean things. His presence. Because when we touch something unclean, His presence is lifted. 1 John chapter 5. Presence must be the most important thing in your life. Heck, when we were addicts out there, the dope was the most important thing in our life. Amen? I left my wife, children, businesses, everything for the drugs. First John chapter 5 and verse 18. Let's speak it together. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Does not sin. In other words, if you're filled with the Spirit, you're in a born-again position, state of being, you're not touching sin. You're rejecting it all the time. It doesn't mean you make a mistake. Remember, sin is the presence of evil. That doesn't mean you might make a mistake, but you quickly repent. No, sorry, Lord. You know, that hammer fell on your foot and you said something you shouldn't because you got in the flesh real quick. Forgive me, Lord. Or you picked it up and threw it through the window. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> and then you had to pay for the window anyways, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. We know that whoever is born of God does not associate with sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. Everyone say, keep myself. And the wicked one does not touch me. Keep myself from what? Touching unclean things then the wicked one can't touch me. Amen? Verse 19. We know that 
we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. In other words, the enticement of the wicked one. The whole world. Look at the whole world. Look at what that lie has done to the whole world. It's incredible, isn't it? And you know, it doesn't mean you don't get sick. You know, there is flu. There is flu season. And I believe that the intensity of the flus are getting stronger. But I don't believe that about... You know, and then people that are not healthy at all are dying. But I've, I've been sick. Everybody in here has been sick. We've all had the flu. A few days, three, four days, poof, you're fine. Hello. Just don't go get tested. Who cares? They're going to lie to you anyway. Here you go. Get in the hospital. Why? Because I get $30,000. Follow the money trail. Hallelujah. And again, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, and we can see it happening now, big time, more than ever. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What's the next thing? Little children, keep yourself from what? Idols. Why? <laughs> Idols are what we call accursed items. So when you are born of God, you don't, you don't sin. The wicked one has no access to you. The world is under the sway of the wicked one, which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Idols are high-level desires that separate us from the presence of God. See, an idol is something you put between you and God, before God. Amen? And many people put themselves before God, so they become their own idols. In James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Touch factor. Hammer had it down. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Amen. Although he was touched for a while. But then he got born again, you know. Now he can sing it. <laughs> Can't touch this. James 1, verse 12. Let's speak it. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is a man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires or emotions or enticed, and then he's finally enticed. See, it first starts off with a thought. That fiery doubt comes in. That thought comes. Then it begins to stir up an emotion. And if you allow that thought to linger, it will grow root. And you won't be able to do anything with it. It will overtake you. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Lust is a strong desire that starts with a thought of want to feed the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It's what we call the eye syndrome, I, I, I. Causing the influence of the evil touch factor. It's a touch factor. We've got to be so careful. In Proverbs 23. You know, it's a real simple thing. Ask yourself... Who told me this? Where did I get this? Not all your thoughts are yours. In fact, most of them aren't. Proverbs 23. 
Is everybody okay? The touch factor. In verse 1, <clears throat> let's speak it. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what it is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to what? Appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Now remember, what you speak is what you eat. In other words, if you're in a place and you're hearing all of these words that's enticing you, if you don't do something with it, it will become deceptive food to you. Because the next thing you know, you'll be speaking what you're thinking. Or what you're desiring. Do not desire his delicacies for they are deceptive food. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, right? Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings and they fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not to eat of the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacy. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is, or he becomes. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Then a morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Deceptive food. Second Corinthians 10. Deceptive food. Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse four. The touch factor. You know, that's one of the things you have to ask yourself is, what am I touching through thoughts? If you're struggling, what am I touching? You know, even flus and stuff are passed on by things you touch. Amen? You could touch a doorknob and it could have a, a flu on it for a certain period of time until it disintegrates. Shake somebody's hand who's sick, you know? Drink out of the same glass or whatever that somebody's sick, they... Well, then you just touched something, right? And it affected you. In verse 4, let's speak it together. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds, which are memory lies. How did the memory lie come? Because you agreed with it. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, we must renew, refresh, and reboot the mind of Christ in us to draw out and throw out the thoughts of the desires that cause the touch of harm from the enemy. You know, you think about it, you go, especially, and I've shared this multiple times, you can go into a store and you hear music from your past. Well, if you're in position, it's not going to affect you. It won't penetrate. Amen? You'll hear it, but it won't affect you. So you've got music, you've got TV show, you've got all kinds of stuff. We're to protect our ear gates and our eye gates. Amen? We don't want anything, we don't want to agree and a touch on anything. First John chapter 4. Only that which is of the Lord. Touch factor. Verse 1. First John chapter 4 and verse 1. You know, one of the things that's important in renewing is to always keep in us in a, in a state of being born again and making what is unseen to become seen. See, when a person is not 
connected, they allow everything out on the outside to affect them physically. The Word of God is not refreshed. I keep telling people so many times, people struggling out there, and, and people I love and I know, and, 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 but they lack God's presence. See, because when you worship and you get into God's presence, you press through and get in, the Word of God becomes, comes forth quicker. You see better. You sense things. Things are different. Why? Because your flesh is no longer stronger than your spirit, man. Your flesh, your, 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 your spirit, man, is now stronger than your soul and your flesh. And you're able to overcome it. Even if you've never wor read the Word of God in your life, if you are filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're, and you're going into God's presence, believe me, the Holy Spirit will be the leading voice in you. And every time something begins to arise in you that's not of God, He'll say, no, no. And next thing you know, he'll be speaking the word. Remember, though, the word is in us. The disciples didn't carry a Bible, did they? They, they were filled, and the Holy Spirit carried them. Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Hello, that means do not believe every voice that you hear. Don't believe it. But test the voices, the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Look at all the false media. People are hearing all of these things and believing all this stuff. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which we have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. In other words, the voice in you after being filled with the spirit is greater. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, or what we call deception. We're to test the voices of influence and avoid the touch, the touch of corruption that leads to destruction. Because the voice of the enemy is trying to bring corruption. Amen? He's trying to corrupt us. And when you touch the voice of corruption, that always leads to destruction. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember, we are not fighting flesh and blood. This is a spiritual fight. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days? Are there perilous times? Yes. Now look at what he says here. For men will be what? Lovers of themselves. In other words, they, are not, they will not be able to deny self. They're always touching something unclean. that promotes self. They'll be lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness but deny the power of God. And from such people what? Turn away. For these are the sort that creep in, in, into households and ministries and businesses and make captives of gullible men and women. Loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts. They are always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hmm. Again, their number one thing is lover of self, with pride of self, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, always touching the unclean things. 
which now does not allow them to break free. In Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7 and verse 11. It's right after Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Joshua 7, verse 11. It's already there now. Let's speak it. Israel has sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed things and have put both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. An accursed item will draw demonic activity. Did you ever notice that when people were out there in their attics and so forth, they want to stop but they don't throw the bottle out or they don't throw the paraphernalia out and it keeps drawing them to it, drawing them to it, drawing them to it. Because that's what it does. It draws. It's an accursed item. They draw demonic activity. So in other words, you're still being touched by that. You are being touched by accursed items. I've gone into many houses and went to go pray for people. And they had accursed items all over the place. And they were sick. And I said, until you get these things out of your house, I can't pray for you. Because those spirits would just come right back to you. Amen? And you got to think about accursed items. They draw demonic presence. How about music? Albums, CDs, certain things that are demonic. If they're not of God, they're not of Jesus. You know, I mean, <laughs> they're demonic. Books. Pornography, alcohol, drugs, tobacco, even dip. People don't realize that's an accursed item. Certain pictures before, before you got born again. You know, I'll, I'll never forget the Lord's told me one day, clean that all out. I mean, and we had pictures of me and my wife and everybody partying. And it looks, oh, we used to be Get it out of here. It was an accursed item. It's not how we are anymore. Amen. So he said to here, now look at verse 12. This is what he said to them, because you have taken the accursed items. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their what? The enemies. But turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed uh, from among you. I mean, that is powerful. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. That's why many times people can't get freed up. You know, and even when you buy things, it's important that you break off every curse. Every day I pray. And I intercede for the, all the total freedom programs of anything that's been donated to them or purchased to us. And brought on our campuses or any of the individual homes. And I break that curse off of every one of those items and send those spirits to the pit. And cleanse that item with the blood of Jesus. But when an individual brings an accursed item on campus, it affects everyone. Everyone. Many times. Just someone who went home on a furlough and they brought back a pack of cigarettes trying to hand it or dip. It affected everyone. And it's just a matter of time where it's exposed. First Timothy chapter 4. So you don't want to touch those accursed items. It'll set you right back. People, places, and things. Accursed items. 1 Timothy 4. In verse 1.
Is everybody there? First Timothy four verse one. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There it is. Voices to cause the touch. Amen? Touch of corruption. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Again, deceiving voices and doctrines of demonic influence. 2 Timothy chapter 1. The touch factor. In verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Let's speak it. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying, on hand, laying of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but power, love, and sound mind. So when, per, when a person is touching with the, uh, and agreeing with the spirit of fear... The thing that begets nullified is power. Love. Wow, they become selfish and a sound mind. Things are broke. They're severed. Fear nullifies everything. Why? Because you touch fear, it messes you all up. Did you ever see an animal get in front of a head headlights? <laughs> They don't move. Everything, everything's gone. Why? Fear has gripped them. You can see people when they're tormented, they, they can't think right because that torment is constant. Fear is a killer, man. Amen? Um, verse 8, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Wow. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Power, love, and sound mind are dismantled by the touch of fear. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, verse 10. Let's speak it together. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel be your what? Rear guard. So, man, when you're right with the Lord and you're in position, not touching unclean things, God will go before you, and he'll be your rear guard. Amen? Psalm 18.
So the beautiful thing about the touch factor is when you touch God's heart in worship, he touches yours. <laughs> Psalm 18, 20. Everybody okay? Let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. Well, if he had clean hands, was he touching anything unclean? No. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from my God, for all of his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him and kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. He rewards those who stay clean. And I'm going to close at Psalm 37. You know, many people that just think that they're getting off drugs and alcohol and pills and all the other stuff is staying clean. Man, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. You know, like I shared before, there's a lot of homeless people. And the, reason, the word I mean homeless is because they lack God's presence. They no, might not be using or anything. They might be good people, but they're still homeless. Because without God's presence, we're nothing. Amen? Psalm 37, verse 3. Let's speak it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and do what? Feed on his faithfulness. In other words, his promises. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will, will give you the what? The desires of your heart. Why? Because they're going to be his desires in your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. In other words, fiery darts shooting at you. The Lord laughs at him, and he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy. To slay those who are upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Praise God. Don't touch the things that are unclean. If you do my, by mistake, repent quickly. Amen. Remember, you can touch things that are unclean with your thoughts, your own words, your hands. You can agree with something. Think about this. All of the people that voted for the administration, it's baby killers. I mean, that's reality. They promote abortion. They are for abortion. That means they're promoting the unborn to be killed. They promote it. They agree with it. They don't want God in their lives. Now these people have been deceived to promote and vote for it. If we promoted and voted for those things that are displeasing to God, we're touching unclean things. Does everybody understand that? That's why some people can't get free because they're still promoting and voting for the things that are displeasing to God. They're touching unclean. And that veil stays there. Because when you touch those things that are unclean, you can't see correctly. You can't hear correctly. 
And you're living out of the flesh, not out of the spirit. Because God will not promote that. He will not let any flesh be glorified. That's why there's a great awakening going on right now. And it's our responsibility to wake as many people. This is not a political fight. It's a spiritual fight. Amen? Unfortunately, there are regimes of political and military and all kinds of other stuff. These are the belief systems that they're promoting. I mean, it's, they're like false religions, doctrines of demons. Amen? They've been enticed. They've been deceived. They've been taken captive in their minds. And they're promoting and voting for the things that are displeasing to God. But many of them are awakening. Thank God. Some won't. Unfortunately, some will wake up right in hell. And there's no unbeliever in hell. Everyone that's there is now a believer. But it's too late. There's no escape. Amen? So we need to be grateful and thankful. And be careful, alert, and discerning not to touch things that are unclean. And to help someone when they are beginning to touch something unclean. You know, bro, don't go there. You know, sister, you shouldn't go there. You don't have to laugh at people's dirty jokes. You're touching and agree with it. Amen? You wanna, we don't want to touch those things anymore. We want to stay clean and sanctified unto the Lord so that we can be positioned to overcome anything that the enemy tries to bring to us. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And let this seed be an impartation and a remembrance <laughs> and a reboot to each and every one of us to renew, refresh, and reboot so we can discern correctly, Lord, and not touch those things that are unclean for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Stay dressed with the blood.